Okay guys, let's look at module 00104, Introduction to Power Tools in the NCCER Core Curriculum. This is section 1.0.0, Power Drills and Drivers. Some trade terms that you need to re read over and become familiar with. All right, power drills and bits. It says basic drill design is the same for most types with only slight differences. And we see this nice drill here with the handle grip, the trigger switch, drill casing, chuck keyhole, chuck jaws, and the chuck. And it has this auxiliary handle on here for support. We want to make sure that all that is there and in good working order before we use this drill. Some different bits that we could use in the drill, a twist bit to drill in metal, forstner bit, paddle or spade bit. We usually take those if we got to drill one or two holes in wood to run some wires or stuff. Masonry bit, we're going to put in a, a, a hammer drill or a rotary hammer to drill in brick, concrete. And then an auger bit, uh, one of the most used bits in wiring wood frame houses has this screw on the end to help pull it through and cut a nice hole for us to run wire. A self-fed bit, again, has this screw. Any of these, these bits that have this screw on the end, it, it's, it's very important to take care of that and make sure it doesn't get damaged. If it does, then it's, it's not going to pull like it's supposed to. Then we have our self-starting bit, or our unibit, as a lot of people call it. Uh, with this one, we can, we can bore down with it and drill out different size holes. We use it a lot to get a hole started for a, a knockout punch or, or use just the unit bit for a half inch hole. Only thing I would say with these, I know this says self-starting step bit, but if you would take a small pilot bit and draw, drill a pilot hole before you started using this step bit, it would, it would last a whole lot longer. But you can use it by itself. Uh, we got a sidewinder. You know, one right here and one with a, a little bit more powerful of a motor. You can tell it's got a bigger frame and a case. It's got two auxiliary handles on it. So these drills work well between studs and in joist walls and ceilings. The difference between the models here is the amount of power. So these, these are big drills. They can really hurt you. You need to be holding on to them and be ready for them. We take the sidewinder because it can get into a, a narrow space where a, a drill that drills straight out might not be able to get in there. Right here, he is uh, changing out the bit with this chuck key. Now, we want to take this chuck key and not lose it. As soon as it's lost, we're not going to be able to tighten or loosen this bit like we like we need to. So, we want to make sure we don't lose that. And the next and most important thing that he's done is before he done this, right here, you see the cord for it unplugged. So, they're going to say before we change any bit, any blade, anything, one of the things we must do is to disconnect the power source, whether it be plug or pull out the battery, either one. All right, and again, right here, he's doing it with a, a keyless chuck, one that can be done by hand, so it doesn't have to have that key. And he took the battery out before he done it. An electromagnetic drill. You know, an electromagnet, let's talk about what is an electromagnet. Electromagnet, we can create an electromagnet by taking a wire and winding it into a coil and connecting it to a power source. That will create a strong electromagnet. Electromagnet versus a regular magnet. If I take a regular magnet, you, you know this, you've done it, and you, you rub it against something metal, that metal will retain residual magnetism. So an electromagnet, when you run power through it, it becomes a magnet, but when you kill the power source, it doesn't have any residual magnetism. Now that's an important point to understand for motor control, all kind of things, transformers and things that we go through with. Electromagnet, take a wire, wrap it into a coil, connect it to a power source. And there's all kind of other things that come along with it, how to make it stronger and other things. We'll talk about that later. It says with this electric drill right here, do not unplug. So the way this drill works is I, I put it in place like on a metal table. I chain it and bolt it down just in case I lose power. And when I turn it on, it becomes an electromagnet in the bottom and stays strongly secured to the base of what I'm drilling in. Now, if I turn off power or lose power, then it's going to lose that electromagnet. It's not going to be magnetic. So that's why they say don't unplug it. Use the safety chain. What if you lost power while you were drilling? Electromagnet. 
No, no residual magnetism. It's a very important fact. Hammer drill. With this one, we see it's got a drill symbol, it's got a, a hammer and drill symbol, and it's got a hammer symbol. That means that this drill could just drill like a normal drill. It could hammer ta -ta 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 -ta, back and forth with a chisel, or it could hammer drill with the drill bit would tap back and forth, and that makes it where you can drill in concrete. This right here is a little depth gauge on this auxiliary handle. You can set it for the depth that you want to drill. Different kind of bits with it. Hammer, hammer drills and impact drivers. Rotary hammers brands require a specific bit shank style. Adapters can be used, but they extend the overall length of the bit. Pneumatic and impact wrenches. So what is pneumatic? Pneumatic is something that is air power. It says pneumatic drills and impact wrenches eliminate the electric motor and provide plenty of power and durability. If I'm, if I'm using pneumatic tools, then I'm going to have air hoses and I want to use a whip check. And all this is, is a little device that connects between the hoses where they, they connect together. And if you've ever been in a mechanic shop or somewhere like that, somebody who steps on a hose or walks over an air hose, it pops apart. If we're, we're using them with high pressure, that thing could whip up in the air and hurt someone. So that whip check is there in case they come apart, the hoses won't go anywhere. All right, some review questions for this section 1.00. It says a power drill must be connected to its source of power when performing maintenance. A power drill must be connected to power when changing the bit. No, that's, that's going to be false. A blank is used on wood and is particularly good for boring, boring flat bottom holes masonry bit step drill bit forstner bit or self-fed bit that's gonna be a forstner bit all right rotary hammers are designed for much blank jobs than a typical hammer drill so you know you can have a small hammer drill that's that drilled in concrete and block and then like the last one we saw a much larger one we're gonna call that a, a rotary hammer instead of just a hammer drill so they are going to be much heavier than a typical drill. Typical drill. The turning force produced by the drill is called, and we want to remember this, a turning, twisting force, torque. And we'll use it in a lot of different ways. Blank tend to have more power for their weight than comparable electric tools. Mechanical, hand tools, electromagnetic, or pneumatic. That's going to be pneumatic. All right, that's it for that section. Next section will be 2.0.0 .0 power saws, and I will see you over there.